Welcome to my KTM video playlist. Today we are going to discuss about sleep of belt and effect of sleep on velocity ratio. Now let's start with first topic sleep of belt. Consider this figure. Here you can see this is the belt and this one is the driver. This one is the follower or you can say driven shaft. Here this driver is rotating in the clockwise direction that's why it is called as tight side and thus it is the slack side. When the driver pulley rotates it carries the belt here you can see due to the firm grip between the pulley and belt. This firm grip is known as frictional grip but sometimes this frictional grip becomes insufficient and due to that slip will occurs. Now see what will be the effect of slip. So this insufficient grip may cause some forward motion of the driver without carrying the belt with it. So due to the insufficient grip the driver will rotate in the forward direction without carrying the belt. This is called the slip on driver side. Similarly, some forward motion of the belt without carrying the driven pulley. So, this phenomenon is called as the slip on the driven side. So simply you can say the difference between linear speed of the rim of pulley and the belt on it is known as slip of belt drive. So very simple the slip is actually the difference between the linear speed of the rim of the pulley and the belt on it. It is expressed in percentage generally. Now next topic, effect of slip of belt on velocity ratio. Let D1 is the diameter of the driving or you can say driver pulley. D2 is the diameter of the driven pulley or you can say follower pulley. N1 is the speed of the driver in RPM that means revolution per minute. N2 is the speed of the follower in revolution per minute. Next S1 that is the slip between the driver and the belt and S2 that is the slip between the belt and the driven. Now as we know that peripheral velocity of the driver is equal to pi dn upon 60. So very simple formula and everybody knows that the peripheral velocity or you can say the linear velocity of the driver pulley that is pi d1 n1 upon 60 because of here d and n both are concerned with the driver that's why it is d1 and n1. Due to the slip between the driver and the belt over here the velocity of the belt passing over the driver is equal to pi d1 n1 upon 60 in bracket 1 minus s1 upon 100. Here s1 that is the percentage of the slip between driver and belt. So once again here speed of the driver pulley that is pi d1 n1 upon 60 but due to the slip between this pulley and belt speed of the belt will be little bit less than the pi d1 n1 upon 60 and that is what s1 percentage that's why it is 1 minus s1 upon 100 so the speed will be reduced due to the slip s2 between belt and driven pulley the peripheral velocity of the driven pulley will be once again reduced and that is less than the velocity of the belt over here. 
So here the velocity of the belt is actually pi d1 n1 upon 16 bracket 1 minus s1 upon 100 and due to the slip s2 the speed of the driven pulley is again reduced and that is once again multiplied by 1 minus s2 upon 100 to this value. So here the speed will reduce again s2 percentage. So very simple initially the speed of the driver pulley is pi d1 n1 upon 60 then due to the slip between this pulley and belt the speed of the belt will reduce that is s1 percentage here you can see next again the slip between the belt and driven pulley that is s2 so again the speed will reduce and that is this one let's say it is equation number one now as we know that peripheral velocity of the driven shaft is equal to pi d2 n2 upon 60 this is actually the formula to find the linear speed of the pulley but here this is the driven pulley that's why it is d2 n2 let's say it is equation number two now compare the equation number one that already we have derived with this equation number two because of here we have derived the equation number one by considering the slip between driver and belt that is S1 and then the slip between belt and driven shaft that is S2. So you can compare this equation number one and two because of both are actually the peripheral velocity of the driven pulley. So I can compare these two equations. So I can write pi d1 n1 upon 60 in bracket 1 minus s1 upon 100 multiplied by 1 minus s2 upon 100 that is equal to pi d2 n2 upon 60. Now here pi by 60, pi by 60 will be cancelled from both sides. So the remaining term will be d1 n1. And here I am going to multiply these two bracket. Take care here multiplication of these two term. So it will be minus minus plus. And this is remaining term d2 n2. Now neglecting this term. Because of you know that s1 upon 100 that is very small value. s2 upon 100 is also very small value. And multiplication of this two value will be very very small so you can neglect it because of it is nearly equal to zero so the final value that is d1 n1 in bracket 1 minus s1 upon 100 minus s2 upon 100 and this is as it is now you can simplify this two term so it will be s1 plus s2 upon 100 remaining term as it is next here you can say s1 plus s2 that is equal to s where s is the total slip of the belt drive because of you know that s1 is the slip between the driver and the belt and s2 is the slip between the belt and the driven so you can say in general the s that means the total slip of the belt drive that is equal to s1 plus s2 so if you put this value over here then it will be very simple 1 minus s upon 100 the remaining term as it is next again simplification so n2 upon n1 that is equal to d1 upon d2 in bracket 1 minus s upon 100 this is actually the velocity ratio for the bell drive by considering the effect of slip previously we have derived the velocity ratio that is n2 upon n1 is equal to d1 upon d2 only where we have not considered the slip that means we have ignored the value of the slip but if the value of the slip is significant then you have to consider it and so that your velocity ratio will be changed so at the time you have to multiply this term 1 minus s upon 100 where s is the total slip of the bell drive now considering the thickness of the belt then it will be modified again like this d1 plus t upon d2 plus t 
this term as it is. So this final equation that is the velocity ratio by considering the thickness of the belt and slip of the belt drive. Thanks my dear friends for watching this video. Press the like button to appreciate it.